In this video, I want to talk a little bit about WireGuard, which is a new kid in the block when it comes to VPN protocols. The reason you might be interested in WireGuard is because it is simple to set up, being integrated into the Linux kernel, and is very, very fast. As such, you can see here today that I'm going to be showing you how you can set it up on your Microtech router pretty easily. So the first thing you want to do is make a backup of your configuration of your Microtech router. To do that, head down into Files, Backup, and you can click Don't Encrypt, and then click Backup here. Head down into here and download the backup that you've created and keep it somewhere safe. The next thing you want to do is update your Microtech router. Now even though you think your Microtech router might be up to date, the problem is that this feature is still in beta. So to get access to this, you're going to have to switch to the development branch of router OS. And to do so, it's pretty simple. You just head down into system, packages, check for updates, and then change your channel into development and update your router. This should take longer than a minute or two and your router will reboot and be ready to go. Once the update is completed, as you can see here in the top left corner, you'll get a WireGuard option. You simply click on that, click add new, you should say WireGuard 1. And then under WireGuard 1, you're gonna see all these settings here. So you can change this port to something else if you like, but you can leave it as default, there's no problem with that. And down here you have your private key, which you should never share with anyone. And then down here you have your public key. So you wanna make a note of this public key and place it into some sort of document like I have here. And then the next thing you need to do is just simply start configuring your client devices. So as you can see, I've got my Android phone. So all you want to do is click add new, select the interface of WireGuard 1. And now I'm going to switch to my Android phone to get the public key here. Okay, so now here on my Android device, so you're going to head into the Play Store and you're going to download the WireGuard device. I'm going to click the little plus thing in the corner and create from scratch. So as you can see here, I've set up a test interface. So you're going to click edit and you're going to give the interface a name. You're going to generate a private key. And then this public key is the one that you're going to send to your router to finish the setup and as you can see here I've got the public key off my first client device inside here and you can put the rest of your devices one by one I'm gonna copy and paste that public key into here you can leave these two bits blank and then down here you're gonna use a new subnet which currently isn't in use so if you're using 192.168.1.1 maybe use 192.168.2. something so that's what you type in here and then put slash 32 and then this here is going to be the IP address for that specific device and each device you have should have its own unique IP address and then down here you can type in a pre-shared key if you would like but it's completely fine to leave that blank all right step two click ip and head into addresses and you're going to create that subnet that we've just started using before so you're going to click add new and you're going to fill in the information like i've done here and then slash 24 is going to give me um 256 addresses i believe and then you can just leave this as dot zero of that subnet and then here you're going to choose interface as wireguard one and then click apply and okay now step three which is the final step on your router we now need to set up the firewall so simply head into the ip firewall add new and we're going to add a new rule like i have over here for wireguard and we'll simply click on here you're going to have chain as input protocol as udp destination port this is going to be the same port that we set up before but so you can change this to anything else that you like that's obviously not in use by any other service you're going to choose n interface list as wan and ensure that action is accept and now that is you ready to go so now let's finish off the configuration on the android device and then down here you're going to put in that same ip address that you configured specifically for this device and then dns server you can choose whatever dns server you want i'm just going to change this to my internal dns server now the next thing you're going to do is you're going to put the public key of your server under the public key of the peer type in that optional pre-shared key that you had before and then over here you can see your servers so you've got a few different ways to do this you can set up a dynamic dna and use a custom domain like i've done here which i had to blur out the other thing you can do is you can simply use the ip address of your house but if your ip address is not static then it's probably going to change and then down here you're going to type in 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0 and then you're simply going to save and that's that's pretty much it you're ready to go okay so now that the configuration is completed on both your device and your server and you added as many devices as you want let's see how fast it is that's a baseline i'm going to run a speed test using 4g on my phone all right now that the speed test is complete you can see here that my 4g speed is actually quite fast and download speed is actually a little bit lower than usual and my home internet connection is actually going to be a little bit slower than my 4g which is funny in terms of upload my home download speed is going to be nearly 400 megabits and my upload speed is going to be nearly 40 so about 37 38 at the absolute max so now let's turn on our wireguard vpn 
you can see that it is connected straight away you can see up in the corner over here now let's switch back to speed test and run another test so you can see here that there's a lot more latency 34 down and 35 up which is pretty much the max of what my upload speed is of my home internet connection so that's the bottleneck in the situation all right so as for second benchmark i'm going to run an iperf test to see if we can get any sort of better result i'm going to hit start and as you can see here it's pretty much maxing out the upload speeds which is the bottleneck in the situation so in conclusion microtix wireguard implementation while it's still in beta it's pretty easy to get set up and going and you can see here that wireguard is very very fast and, and i hope to see it become more mainstream in the future as most people's upload speeds are weak in the download speeds i'm pretty sure you're going to have no problem getting wireguard to completely saturate your connection